The American Southwest consumes a staggering amount of water, with over 60 million inhabitants, tens of millions of acres of farmland, and massive manufacturing industries to support. A steady supply of water pumping into the region is crucial for its survival. But what if I told you that the entire supply can run dry? The water crisis is unfolding in the nation's southwest as the mighty Colorado River begins to dry up as a result of overconsumption and climate change. Well, it's true. Because of the gigantic and increasing demand for water in the area and a rapidly declining number of gallons to go around, critical water shortages are a very real and present danger. The most important piece to this puzzle is the Colorado River, as it's the main supply line for the Southwest's water. It's basically impossible to overemphasize just how important the Colorado River is to the Southwestern states. Water from the river supplies over 40 million people in the area and sustains 5 million acres worth of farmland. Not only that, but it makes up the majority of water supply for several major cities like Las Vegas, Tucson, and San Diego. Lake Mead, the largest man-made reservoir, plays a huge role here too. It's fed mainly by the Colorado River and is the principal source of water for Arizona, California, and Nevada. Of course though, Lake Mead is running out of water, and fast. In 2022, the reservoir was using just a quarter of its capacity for water storage. It's a far cry from the 1980s, when the lake could have fit the entire Empire State Building under its waters. Since then, the water levels have declined by somewhere around 20%, or 170 feet. Since so many inhabitants and farmers are dependent on Lake Mead just to survive, you can imagine the concerns already. But it's not just happening to Lake Mead though. In Utah, for example, the Great Salt Lake has lost 73% of its water from averages tracked since 1850, and recent reports warn that it could disappear within five years. So why are most of these lakes' water levels dropping? Well, let's start by looking at domestic farmers and agricultural companies. How much water are they using? Short answer, a lot. In many areas, 50% or more of the water supply goes to growing cattle feed. And in most states, agriculture makes up the overwhelming majority of water usage. In New Mexico, for example, irrigated agriculture is responsible for roughly 80% of water use. But this is a slippery slope because if you reduce it, then you have to decide what gets to grow and what doesn't. To make matters worse, overpumping is also a giant problem in the agricultural sector. Looking just at the Colorado River Basin, it's estimated that groundwater overpumping adds up to around 1.24 million acre feet every year, with Arizona being the cause of 80% of that figure. Considering that over 50% of the water pumped from the basin goes to agriculture, overpumping adds up a lot over time. With this amount of water being dedicated to farmers, and especially cattle farmers, it's hardly any surprise that the Southwest's water supply is shrinking so fast. This just hammers home the harsh reality. It's not people watering their lawns or even golf courses in the desert that's the problem. It's an addiction to cheap agriculture. It's farms growing water-intensive crops in places that were never meant to support that type of life. But this problem only gets worse when you factor in arguably the biggest danger in the region, drought. California just had the driest start to its year in history. The past 20 years have seen unheard of levels of drought for the Southwest. During that time, the Colorado River's water flow has decreased by 20%, and this can have disastrous consequences for reservoirs. To give you an example, let's talk about Lake Mead again. As I mentioned earlier, Lake Mead is operating at around a quarter of its full water capacity. But what if it drops even lower? Well, if the water levels get too low, the reservoir won't actually be able to power its hydroelectric dam anymore. Meaning, if the drought isn't properly dealt with, the biggest reservoir for the southwest could grind to a complete halt, along with billions of dollars of economic activity and thousands of jobs that rely on it. And by all metrics, the drought is here to stay for the foreseeable future. Precipitation continues to decline at high rates. There's simply not enough water to go around. And I haven't even talked about the temperature. The American Southwest is hot. I mean, scorching hot. Some cities are easily reaching up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer daily. And for the non-Americans, that's like 50 degrees Celsius. The water there evaporates extremely quickly. And because it's so hot, the area just needs more water. But this is what happens when you build and live in areas that were never designed to have large populations living there. Forests begin to burn up more, rivers become diminished, and sand starts blowing through places that used to be vegetated. The desert southwest is an intrinsically limiting environment, even with a big river running through it. And the thing is, it's only growing. The southwestern population has increased by close to 50% in the last 20 years, so it's not exactly difficult math. More people plus less water equals worse shortages. This isn't all though. There is another, even scarier reason to expect the drought to have even more severe effects. Climate change. While there are certainly smaller scale reasons to blame for the drought, 
none of those reasons do justice to the scale of the situation if we don't talk about the climate. Simply put, the area is increasingly getting hotter and more arid, to the extent that some climate scientists say calling it a drought isn't totally accurate. Instead, they say we should call what's happening aridification, drier and drier southwestern land as a new normal. It's hard to argue with this point when you look at the weather patterns. Every year, there are two basic factors in how wet or dry the southwest will get. The number of rainstorms reaching the region from the Pacific Ocean and the amount of rainfall from the seasonal monsoon. As you might have guessed by now, both types of storms have dropped enormously in recent years. In 2020, there was a complete monsoon failure, which led to the driest summer in recorded southwestern history. Rising temperatures have only worsened the problem. We already know it's extremely hot in this region, but the average temperature has climbed 3 degrees Fahrenheit since the start of the 2020 drought and will continue to do so. At the time of making this video, the Earth also warmed to the highest temperature ever recorded by human-made instruments for four days in a row, from July 3rd to the 6th in 2023, showing a sign for what's possible to come. Hotter temperatures just increase evaporation, making the land even drier than it already is. And to top it all off, the problem hasn't exactly been helped by gross mismanagement of what water is still there. Now, if you're wondering how you can even mismanage something as simple as water, you'd be surprised. In fact, it can be argued that this entire water crisis stems, in large part, from mismanagement going back to the 1920s. See, back when the Southwest states were first drawing up an agreement for how they would split the water rights for the Colorado River, they guaranteed each state a percentage of the water flow from the river. Only, there was a little issue. The planners thought the Colorado River had more water than it actually did, so each state was promised rights to more water than actually exists. And each subsequent year has added to this original blunder with more and more mismanagement. Stuff like farmers ignoring conservation practices and local governments turning a blind eye. Agri-businesses choosing super water-demanding crops like cotton that don't actually provide as much profit as more sustainable crops like wheat. Government subsidies encouraging farmers to grow unsustainable amounts of cattle crops like alfalfa and other grasses. All of this adds up to a serious problem when it happens on such a huge scale and seems to get worse every year. And lastly, we need to talk about another, more hidden problem for the American Southwest. Foreign buyers particularly Saudi Arabian foreign buyers. It's not exactly a secret that Saudi investors and businesses have been buying up land and water rights in the Southwest, but the scale is absolutely shocking. For example, Saudi enterprise Fondamonte owns as well as leases thousands of acres of farmland on top of a massive groundwater aquifer in Arizona where they pump unlimited amounts of groundwater for essentially no cost, in part because there are no regulations on how much water can be pumped out of the ground. They consume somewhere in the ballpark of 18,000 acre-feet a year. And if you're unfamiliar with acre-feet, as most people are, let's put that number into perspective. That amount of water could supply 54,000 Arizona homes with water. And I emphasize that it's a single Saudi water company in a single southwest state. Almarai, a Saudi dairy company, has bought tens of thousands of acres of farmland in California and Arizona, spending over $79 million in the process. When you consider existing water shortages in the region and how many domestic farmers are already draining supplies from Lake Mead, this development does not bode well for water sustainability. So now, what happens if the Southwest actually does run out of water? I mean, there must be some sort of contingency plan put in place for such a serious issue, right? Well, kind of, but not really. Different solutions have been floated, but most of them aren't exactly sustainable. I mean, ultimately, farmers need to pump groundwater for their crops, which only worsens the issue. So the Arizonian government has considered channeling water from the Mississippi River, for example. But that is not only impractical, but also just pawns the issue off on another overtaxed water source. Desalination is also an option, where you basically turn seawater into clean water to drink. But it would cost around $2,000 per acre foot, roughly 10 times more expensive than the current cost of Colorado River water, and likely too expensive for the agriculture center, which again uses about 80% of the region's domestic water. Desalination also presents environmental challenges, such as where to put the salt and sediments left over from the process, which are bad to return to the sea, because all that extra stuff essentially pollutes the natural seawater. It would also be inefficient and even more expensive to pump the water from the coast to more inland states such as Colorado. So it's really only an option for coastal states. But that's not to say there haven't been some positive steps in the right direction. In California, water demand dropped by 20% from 2015 to 2017 by increasing conservation efforts in cities. Likewise, in 2017, Arizona actually used less water than it did in 1957, despite the population increasing by roughly seven times since then. And in Las Vegas, population increased by 800,000 people since 2002, while cutting Colorado River consumption by 31%, showing how to grow amid scarcity. 
These water conservation efforts were largely achieved by legislative measures that limited irrigation and more strictly managed the state's groundwater supplies. And in the agricultural sector of the whole southwest, farmers and businesses are working to use less water by implementing more efficient irrigation systems, more stormwater capture, and more wastewater reuse, which is ultimately two to three times cheaper than what desalination would cost. But who knows what can happen next? We might see a significant migration of people to the Great Lakes Basin over the next few decades, as the fresh water and increasingly temperate climate will make this region a comparative paradise. The state of Arizona has already begun restricting future home building in the Phoenix area due to a lack of groundwater, based on projections showing that wells will run dry under existing conditions. If this problem continues to worsen due to inefficiency and complacency, the people in the southwest may very well need to adapt to live sustainably with the resources they have, not the resources they were planning on.